those folks that minister to uh, those that are most needy in the, the Queen City that are going to kind of take us through tonight's vigil. At this time, I'd like to open up the remarks with Craig Chevalier. Hi, everybody. Um, today is another day in this, this battle for um, that we've all joined in on. And I was just talking to Mary moments ago, and uh, I look at the names in this list, and I saw at least six of them that I knew quite well. And I look at them as really an amazing success story of how all of the people who are serving just came to these people whose lives were derailed and kind of put them back on the rails for a strong finish in their final days. Um, there was a guy that I, that I know that I met three years ago, and um, he had just got out of jail that day, and I met him at a door. We were serving meatball subs. He came to the door in a red pair of silk boxers, and that's it. And um, his name is John. And John was a very, very difficult man, and, and he wouldn't accept anything that we had for him that day. But over the years, we got to know him, and we just get to love him every time we saw him. And over that time, he became just this most vibrant example of just the of love that you would ever know. And what ended up happening is that instead of me ministering to him, he was then ministering to me. Because every time I saw him, he was just as spectacular. He was right. He knew that he had locked in his salvation with the Lord, and he knew what he was facing for eternity, and he was happy in that. His circumstances were really difficult in this world, but he knew where he was headed, and he died this past summer, and he was one of the names on those list. So i just like, like us all to just, just be thankful for the opportunities to be here in these streets of Manchester, to run into these names. It's really a redemption story, and that's what Christmas is. It's, it's, this is a story of redemption um, for all men. Uh, it's, an, it's an answer that is available for Jesus for all men. And so we just lift that up to the Lord tonight. We just ask Him to bless this time with us. To, uh, as we reflect, prayerfully reflect, on all of the things that have happened in this past year. And the names of special ones we've ever done. Not just a day where ministers gather, but this is an official Memorial Day and set forth in a proclamation by the governor of New Hampshire. And I will read the proclamation. State of New Hampshire, by His Excellency John Lynch, Governor, a proclamation, Homeless Memorial Day, December 21, 2012. Whereas citizens across New Hampshire will gather together on December 21st, 2012 to honor and remember homeless individuals who have died in New Hampshire and whereas the first day of winter, the longest night of the year, is an appropriate time to reflect on the difficulties faced 
by those without a home, without home or shelter. And whereas adequate housing is essential for healthy families and communities, and whereas difficult economic times and a shortage of both rental and single family housing stock makes housing inaccessible to an increasing number of New Hampshire residents, that many of whom are working full time, whereas the last year 4,825 people received shelter in a state-funded emergency shelter for more than 17.5% were children. And whereas, on a cold winter night on January 2011, 2,438 people were in shelters. And last year, the average length of stay in an emergency shelter was approximately 61 days. And Whereas untold numbers of homeless families are living with relatives or friends. Whereas December 21st, 2012 is the 22nd annual National Homeless Memorial Day. Now I, now therefore I, John H. Lynch, Governor of the State of New Hampshire, do hereby proclaim December 21st, 2012 as Homeless Memorial Day in New Hampshire and urge all citizens to work together to provide those in need in our community with access to a safe, warm place to stay. Given this 21st day of December, in the year of our Lord, 2012. At this time, I'd like to open it up for anyone who is a family member of someone who perished, who is homeless, or for the friends of those who are homeless. <coughs> Is there anyone here who would like to speak? <coughs> My late fiance had passed on April 3rd, 2011. He basically lived here in Manchester. Those that were homeless, the homeless coalition. And through his great faith, he helped. being on the streets. Uh, on the streets, he was away from the shelter because he moved to He then threatened the that we were shelter that he go to the block to help those that were homeless in the shelter at the time. He tried to get decent meals, number one, and to keep from being on the streets. Well, during that time, he ended up being turned away. <coughs> He then lived on the streets for five years, where he suffered sexual pneumonia, where he had to have half of his body. So during the time of his passing, he had passed and had to have to get back into that body, and had to try to get in half. And at that time, he was still living in that house. He was in his apartment. He had a wall that actually had been cut where you could actually see a hole. And so all the gold was already coming to their kid. And so at this time, you know, he basically tried to help those there that were homeless. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I'd like to share a little bit about uh, my friend. Everybody knows him as Moondog or Moon. Everybody knows him. He was such a character, full of life and fun. And a uh, quick story about myself and Pastor George. When he met tragedy that day in the river, we spent the last week of his life, and he was on life support in the hospital by his bedside. A couple of miraculous things happened there. The first day that I was there, I ran into another fellow who had come to 1269. He had been drunk when he was coming, and he was friends of Boom. So here we, and since that time, he had gotten sober. So now he's standing at his friend's, what would be his deathbed, talking about his life and how it needed to change. And it was a direct result of Moon's passing that caused him to say, I really need to change. And right now he's, he's on his fifth week of being inside Teen Challenge. He's living clean and sober, and he's doing a fantastic job. The other thing that happens is 
you know, Moon died, when he died, he had like five pastors all gathered around him. The Catholic priest at the hospital didn't know what to do. So, it was really just a marvelous occasion, a celebration of life. And he was also surrounded by family and friends, which is an unusual case for someone who lives on the streets. Because by that time, most of the family and friends have abandoned them. Well, on my second night going there, George, George had the, the first watch because I was at work. I came in for the second watch. And me being the humble, quiet man that I am, I walked into the hospital room. I said, let me tell you about Moondog. And I began to tell his daughter how God was in hot pursuit of her father. I began to share how Moondog and I had met and been together several times in 1269. And at one point where he was broken, he said, Jerry, I know that I need to be saved and I need the Lord. And I held his hand and we prayed and he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. <laughs> After I told this story, there was a lot of weeping, laughing, and crying all going on at the same time in the room because, unbeknownst to me, George had just prayed for the family for a sign that they would know that Moon would go home. Now, Moon liked to play the drums, and I don't believe that it's a coincidence or a happenstance or a circumstance, but that this is one of those divine appointments. <laughs> because right now we're, we're going to have Chris Cavanaugh play a song. And when Chris picked this song, I'm sure he had no idea what he was doing. Chris, I know that you were doing it. But what I mean by that is, <laughs> the significance of this song, at his memorial service, they had a video of Moon playing the drums. The song that played in the background was the song that Chris is going to play for us. And it was as though Moon was playing along. <coughs>